Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We have a last uh, lecture regarding pulmonary infections. This is respiratory system. This is the fifth lecture of pneumonia, pulmonary infection. Pneumonia. In this class, we will be talking about mainly the pathological aspects of pneumonia. So, how can we categorize pathologically pneumonia? Pneumonia as broadly Categorized as lobar pneumonia, lobar pneumonia, and bronco pneumonia. Bronco pneumonia. So, this you can see in the pictures. Lobar pneumonia means you have. right lung left lung so lobar pneumonia means any one lobe is completely involved any one lobe either it may be upper lobe middle lobe lower lobe and right side or any lobes on the left side any one lobe is completely involved but the adjacent lobe is perfectly fine there is no involvement in the adjacent lobe and this infection or inflammation is limited by interlobar septa so when you see this kind of a morphology, then we call it as lobar pneumonia. So it just doesn't mean that only one lobe has to be affected. It can be a two lobes also. So lobar pneumonia involving both the lower lobes. Or it can be the whole lung. Lobar pneumonia involving all the lobes of right lung. So this is the definition of lobar pneumonia. Can you see the picture? That is the pink color what you are seeing on your left side, the whole lobe. The lower lobe is affected, but upper lobe is unaffected, is perfectly normal. When you see this kind of a morphology, we will call it as lobar pneumonia. In comparison to lobar pneumonia, we have second category called as bronco pneumonia. Bronco pneumonia, see what is the typical classical features of bronco pneumonia? It will be multiple patchy involvement of the lung parenchyma. Usually, it is not limited to the one lobe. You can see that in picture here, two lobes are involved on right side, both lower and middle lobe, and you are seeing pinkish dots. That means these are the involved areas, that is mnemonic patches, and intervening lung parenchyma is essentially unremarkable. Whenever you see this kind of a morphology, we call it as bronco pneumonia. I repeat, lobar pneumonia means complete involvement of one lobe of the lung it may be one lobe two lobes or whole of the lung and if one lobe is involved the next lobe is perfectly fine normal it's uninvolved that is called lobar pneumonia bronco pneumonia usually multiple patchy involvement involves more than one lobe and intervening lung parenchyma between these pink patches will be normal so this is the morphological difference between lobar and bronco pneumonia you can see the x-ray pictures on this side one lobe is completely involved right you can see the markings like this and this is the haziness or consolidation causing involvement in the right middle lobe lower lobe and upper lobe are perfectly fine dark color what are you seeing nothing but air filled spaces nothing the haziness is the involved lung so this is how the lobar pneumonia looks on radiology. Bronco pneumonia, when you see the other picture, you have both the lungs and it is dot 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 nodular kind of an opacity throughout the lung. Both the right lung and left lung both are involved and intervening area showing blackish blackish area. Those are uninvolved lung parenchyma. So all of you understand how the lobar pneumonia and bronco pneumonia looks on the normal chest radiographic films. This is one more example of CT film showing the difference between the
the lobar and bronchopneumonia see on the right side one lobe is completely involved that is whitish patch in the lung but rest of the lung parenchyma is perfectly fine lobar pneumonia on other side you see the multiple patchy involvement of the lung that is bronchopneumonia if you observe carefully in the second picture all those white patches what you are saying they have a, some center or some round space in the center right and there is consolidation surrounding it can you see there is the opening in the center with the consolidation one there is opening consolidation here that means the terminal bronchi uh, one of the segment of bronchi or bronchiole along with adjacent lung parenchyma is involved that's why we call it as bronco pneumonia bronco pneumonia this is one patch there is one bronchus adjacent lung parenchyma is involved which is bronco pneumonia one bronchus and second bronchus the alveolar parenchyma which is present between these two bronchus are normal or uninvolved this is the typical picture of bronco pneumonia and lobar pneumonia when you see the gross examination of the lung this is the lobectomy specimen and can you see the upper lobe is perfectly fine but lower lobe when you see this is the lower lobe it is showing the gray white solidification of one complete lobe you can still make out the bronchial openings here and upper lobe is perfectly fine it looks morphologically or grossly normal spongy appearance so this is lobar pneumonia affecting the one complete lobe the gray white discoloration solidification or consolidation we can say this is the gross picture of lobar pneumonia and again we have two important pictures book pictures these are book picture this is the section one complete section of the lung where one lobe is totally or completely whitish appearance this is the consolidated lung consolidated lung consolidated means solidified lung the normal sponginess will be lost gray white appearance this is complete lobar pneumonia the upper lobe is normal it has spongy in appearance so now how it looks looks like normal lung this is a typical morphological or gross picture of lobar pneumonia when compared to this we have one more picture where we have seen multiple patchy area some there is a diffuse white patch here gray white patch there is diffuse nodular gray white patches here and there are some patches here too multiple patchy involvement of the lung across the lung involving both sides of the intra and lobar septae multiple lobes we call it as bronchopneumonia all of you understand one more important thing that you should remember is this is in the initial stages fine when it becomes more and more severe these lungs nodules they coalesce they become more infected more involved so they also in the later and severe stages they can also form lobar pneumonia lobar pneumonia appearance when it is diffuse multiple patches coalescing to form a single big patch so this can also so at that stage you cannot differentiate it is a true lobar pneumonia or bronco pneumonia that you should remember so when we say lobar pneumonia all the books they say certain stages of lobar pneumonia all of you should understand what are the uh, stages there are four clearly mentioned stages in the pneumonia lobar pneumonia i say lobar pneumonia these are depending on the duration of infection or inflammation the first stage when the infection occurs in the lung the first stage we call it as stage of congestion stage of congestion next stage is stage of red hepatization third stage stage of gray hepatization and finally the fourth stage when everything is done 
we have stage of resolution. Stage of resolution. Let's see. Each stage, if you take a microscopic examination, a microscopic suction and observe under microscopy, how it looks. You can see the schematic diagram. I will be showing that in detail in the board. We will talk about stage of congestion. All of you know what is congestion. Congestion is nothing but the stasis of blood in the blood vessels. We have alveolar parenchyma here. One alveoli. One alveoli. One alveoli. One. One. One alveoli. In stage of congestion what happens? All of you know that there are septal capillaries present in the interalveolar septic. These capillaries, they will become engorged. This is the normal. So when there is uh, inflammation, these septal capillaries will be enlarged. Enlarged and these will be filled up with RBCs, red blood cells. So ca septal capillaries will enlarge. They will be filled up with RBCs and small part of the fluid, they may, it may exude and it can accumulate in the alveolar lumen, a small part. This is the first stage. So, when you examine this and gross, you will see lung becoming totally red in color. That's why we call it as stage of congestion. Okay, lungs become affected part of the lung, will become more red in color, mainly because congestion of the alveolar capillaries. When you see under microscopy, these capillaries will be enlarged in size, filled with red blood cells. This is the first stage. What happens? The second stage. If it is not stopped at this stage, it will go to second stage. We call it as stage of red hepatization. Important word is red and it is hepatization. On gross, even the lung at this stage looks red in color. But here it is smooth or soft or spongy in consistency but in second stage it takes the consistency of the liver okay that's why you call it as hepatization so why it takes the consistency of the liver what exactly happens let's say in the microscopy when the sections are taken at this stage what happens this is the first stage what i mentioned second stage what happens these alveoli, if you recollect in the first class, they are very thin. They do not have any kind of a basement membrane. Whenever the pressure is increased in the interceptal capillaries, if the pressure is more, these capillaries will rupture. And more and more RBCs will start coming and collecting in the alveolar lumen. Initially, stage of congestion will have only the congested enlarged septal capillaries. Lumen is almost clear or you may see occasional lymphocytes or occasional RBCs with very minimal fluid. Next stage you will see numerous RBCs which are getting accumulated in the alveoli. When the RBCs are extruded from the blood vessels, you will have more of plasma also coming up. So whatever the air space in the alveolar lumen will be replaced by cells and also fluid. Hence this part of the lung appears solidification solid it becomes solid that's why we call it as hepatization we call it as red because predominantly you have septal congestion along with that many or uh, numerous rbcs they are present in the alveolar lumen this is stage of red hepatization next if you leave like that then it will go for stage of gray hepatization what exactly happens so see the difference it is still lung is red when you see when the lung goes to this stage still the hepatization still it is solid in color but redness will be lost you will see gray white patches solid lung with gray white patches just like a consolidation then that stage we call it a stage of gray hepatization when you take suctions at this stage what exactly seen so this is stage of congestion this is stage of red hepatization in stage of gray hepatization what will happens along with the RBCs there are more and more number of WBCs will come in 
they start accumulating. These are all WBCs. WBCs is nothing but they are nucleated cells. So more and more WBCs will start accumulating and the RBCs which are there in the alveolar lumen, they will be destroyed. So these alveoli, destruction of, of red blood cells and more accumulation of white blood cells in the alveolar lung, it loses the redness in color and it becomes gray color. That's why it is gray hepatization. One thing you should remember is RBCs, all of you know that the normal lifespan of the RBCs is about 120 days. If a normal RBC is circulating continuously in the vasculature on the blood circulation, its lifespan is 120 days. Once it comes out from the vessel wall, any kind of a vessel wall, extravascularly it will not survive. So here it has come out, it has to be destroyed. Once it comes out, it stays there for some time and within a day or two, this RBCs will be damaged. We will have hemoglobin and we will have iron. So to engulf, to, to clear off these red blood cells, you have along with the white blood cells, you will have many macrophages. This is the symbol for macrophages. Macrophages. These macrophages will engulf a part of the hemosiderin pigment which is raised by the destruction of RBCs. So, in grey hepatization, you will see many white blood cells, alveolar macrophages and also hemosiderin pigment. Hemosiderin pigment laden macrophages. RBCs will be gone. So, this is the microscopic picture of grey hepatization. Then the final stage is resolution. There is infection going from one stage to other. Ultimately, infection anywhere in the body has to resolve. So, these RBCs or WBCs will be gradually taken out from this or gradually disintegrated and they will be cleared off by mononuclear cells, histiocytes and it will become process of healing stage. This we call it as a stage of resolution, a stage of resolution. The alveoli will become normal, all the inflammatory cells will go off, okay, all from gradually cleared up and everything will be healed. This is called stage of resolution. So when it heals, WBCs to come, all of you know that wherever you have inflammatory cells, they secrete a lot of cytokines. So when the cytokines are secreted here, the fibroblasts which are present in the alveolar interstitium, they also act, these cytokines will also act, that is fibroblast growth factor, fibroblast, fibroblast growth factor. So as a healing process, the fibroblasts also proliferate and in the intermediate stage, this fibroblast, they fill up, these are the elongated cells fill up the alveolar lumen gradually it will be cleared off so this presence of fibroblastic plug in the alveolar lumen we call it as organization organization and gradually this will be cleared this is the stage of resolution all of you remember stage of congestion you have only this congestion of the septal capillaries alveolar lumen may be occasional red blood cells. Next stage, numerous red blood cells with plasma in the alveolar lumen, no air, hence it is hepatization, still it is red in color. Gradually, these RBCs will be broken down and it will be repl replaced by numerous white blood cells, alveolar macrophages and also hemosiderin laden macrophages. Finally, there will be fibroblastic plug formation causing organization. Gradually, it will be resolved and all the lung parenchyma, affected lung parenchyma will become normal. So this is stage of resolution. All of you should remember. You can see the picture, what I have explained here. It is there and the microscopic picture is there. Stage of congestion is not there. The first picture what you are seeing is stage of grey hepatization. Then you have organization. The spindle shaped cells what you are seeing in the picture is nothing but some of the spindle shape structures what you are seeing filling up the alveoli in the down picture and also in the right uh, corner that is called as 
young fibroblastic proliferation filling up the alveolar lumen so this we call it as mass and body mass and body mass and bodies they are present in organizing pneumonia the pneumonia and the organizing phase these are nothing but young fibroblastic proliferation gradually it will dissolve so we know the gross uh, the morphological variants of pneumonia how it looks radiologically how it looks uh, pathologically by gross uh, histology and also the microscopic histology samples then if you don't treat or if you don't take proper precautions for the prevention of pneumonia what all can happen that we call it as complications of pneumonia complication what all can happen complication if you don't treat it forms a diffuse damage to the lung parenchyma with necroinflammatory exudate that we call it as cavitatory lung leading to abscess formation that is lung abscess when, once the lung is damaged it is damaged will have a big cavity filled with pus okay the so lung abscess is one of the most common complications of an untreated pneumonia second there is infection on one part of the lung it can spread to other part of the lung that is spread it can spread to other part of the lung at the same time the organisms which are present causative organisms which are present in the lung because lung is a very richly vascular organ it can enter the hematogenous and the infections can spread to the other part of the body other parts of the body by hematogenous spread hematogenous spread that is one of the important if the lung is severely affected all the lobes both right and left lungs are affected then ultimately causes respiratory failure respiratory failure these are the complications if you have lung abscess what all can happen the abscess can rupture into the thoracic cavity leading to emphysema thoracis emphysema thoracis so these are the complications of pneumonia emphysema thoracis lung abscess spread of the infection to the other part of the lung other organs by hematogenous spread and ultimately if it is severe it causes severe respiratory failure in the same pneumonia we have the other category called as all of you should know because i am talking about pneumonia you should know there is other category an important chapter called as interstitial pneumonia interstitial pneumonia So, interstitial pneumonia, it is a separate chapter, very big chapter that I am going to talk about in the near future. Because I mentioned pneumonia, I thought I will mention uh, definition of interstitial pneumonia. It is also a pneumonia, that means inflammation of the lung parenchyma, but the inflammatory cells are particularly limited to the interstitial. If you say alveoli, these are the alveoli, but whatever inflammation or major pathology if it is present it is present along the interstitium of the alveoli numerous inflammatory cells numerous inflammatory cells alveolar lumen is perfectly fine or you may see very few inflammatory cells so when you see this kind of a picture where inflammatory process is predominantly limited to the alveolar septa without causing much damage to the lung parenchyma uh, alveolar lumen parenchyma these categories as interstitial pneumonia there are it is a very big chapter that i'll be going to talk about later the most common cause is viral and idiopathic pneumonias okay the next one is one thing what you should remember is we spoke about acute pneumonia etc etc and a few word about chronic pneumonia what is this chronic pneumonia chronic pneumonia the previous categories what i mentioned the most of them are acute pneumonia community acquired pneumonias atypical typical nosocomial pneumonia they are more of a acute 
if infection persists lung infection persists for many weeks many weeks sometimes even months many weeks sometimes even months then we dump all those kind of pneumonias and label it as chronic pneumonias why it is important it is very important because certain organisms they are more prone to cause chronic pneumonia what are those organisms in indian setup first and foremost is tuberculosis it causes chronic pneumonias tuberculosis we'll be dealing about tuberculosis in later chapters next we have various fungal infections tuberculosis and fungal infections are most common causes of chronic pneumonias so fungal infections you have what are those fungal infections histoplasma i'll just name the organisms the morphology and all you will read in detail in microbiology histoplasma we have uh, in this uh, nocardia we have nocardia and we have blastomycosis blasto mycosis number 3 you have coccidoidium coccidoidio so mycosis so these are the are common organisms which causes chronic pneumonia i repeat tuberculosis in indian setup and developing countries one of the four most common cause of chronic pneumonia and rest is fungal infections okay so how to differentiate tb bacilli from nocardia for demonstration of tb bacilli most common stain is used is zeal nielsen stain we call it as acid fast bacilli stain afb stain all of you know when you do afb stains you can easily differentiate the mycobacterium tubercular organism with the nocardia can you see the pictures here the first picture shows the mycobacterium tuberculosis these are tiny slender beaded like structures they are tiny but when compared to the next picture the nocardia species they have elongated branching acid fast bacilli both are acid they will be acid both will take up acid fast stain the certain stain but by seeing at the morphology you can differentiate whether it is a tubercular bacilli and whether it is a nocardia bacilli and for histoplasmosis is very difficult uh, to diagnose clinically and also radiologically histoplasmosis for clinically radiologically histoplasmosis they look very much like tuberculosis very difficult to differentiate tuberculosis unless until you do a histopathological demonstration of the organism it is very difficult the clinical presentation everything is more and similarly like tuberculosis how it looks if the biopsy is taken for demonstration of organisms or to rule out tuberculosis if it is histoplasma how it looks the proper lung excision for diagnosis of uh, histoplasma usually you will not get nowadays because of improved uh, in uh, non invasive methods if if you see histoplasma on gross how it looks it forms a nodule like fibrotic nodule big fibrotic nodule it is there in the it's a book picture you can make out the gray white fibrotic nodule it looks how it looks on gross examination if you take sections from here and there is a microscopic examination you will see histiocytic cells filled up with tiny organisms with clear space surrounding it these organisms almost like 2 to 4 microns tiny organisms present predominantly intracellularly in the macrophages that's how it looks under microscopy this is the diagnosis and morphology of histoplasmosis blastomycosis there are different stains you can see a thick wall fungus with a small uh, daughter for uh, blastomycosis these are the uh, special stains what you will see you will see thick wall fungus with a budding form this is how it looks the blastomycosis coccidioidomycosis will have a big spherule like organism with thick walled 
with thick wall, double thick wall, and you will see small microsporules inside the the big organisms. This is how it looks under oxidized microscope. So this completes the uh, lung infection lecture. Thank you.